Um, hello. Um, I had recently the opportunity to speak with a, um, um, an uh, IDC uh, NGO in defense of Christians. And um, the, I, I began my uh, conversation with uh, a little, very brief overview of uh, demography, the demography of New recent Christians uh, in the Middle Ages uh, with the coming of the Crusades. And, and I meant it both as a... <clears throat> as a way to be uh, sort of provocative uh, because uh, it's not politically correct to speak about the Crusades when speaking of near recent Christians because they're often associated with the Crusades and one gets the impression that uh, near recent Christians are somehow a new implant or a colonial implant or um, uh, uh, interlopers uh, from outside of the region. Um, it's actually the other way around. It is uh, the Muslims and the Arabs who are the interlopers, the um, the conquerors, the uh, imperialists, uh, uh, the um, the newcomers to to the region. Um, and because of the fact that these facts are not. Um, um, accepted as they should be, as received wisdom. Uh, Near Eastern Christians in particular, Lebanese Maronites, um, I, I should say Near Eastern Christians in general, Lebanese Maronites in particular, are often ridiculed by um, Arabo fascists uh, who view the Middle East as the single monolith of Arabs uh, the, 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 the Christians are ridiculed for uh, disclaiming uh, Arabist uh, fairy tales um, and, and favoring instead um, Christian benchmarks, even European benchmarks and cultural references. Uh, yet Near Eastern Christian history, um, Near Eastern Christians value systems uh, Near Eastern Christians intellectual accretions are those of Christendom uh, and uh, whatever Christendom inherited from whatever came before it. So the accretions are those of, yes, Aristotle, Virgil, the Bible, Justinian, uh, Thomas Aquinas, Augustine, the Church Fathers and, and Knights, uh, from Clement to to John Chrysostom to Saint Louis, the the um, the saintly king of France of the Sixth Crusade, to um, uh, more recently um, another knight, uh, Henry Gouraud, who is credited General Henry Gouraud, who's credited with uh, the establishment of modern Lebanon. Uh, when Allenby, <laughs> upon entering uh, Jerusalem after World War I, when he is reported to have said uh, the Crusades end today, or when Gouro, in the case of the Maronites in Lebanon, allegedly kicks uh, Saladin's tomb and says, Nous revoilà, Saladin, here we, we're, here we are, back, Saladin. Uh, when, uh, when these phrases are uttered, uh, New recent Christians get it. Um, identify with it, uh, are sensitive uh, to it. Um, again, um, their historical and emotive references uh, are native Judeo-Christian, not Arab, and their intellectual repositories and linguistic conduits are uh, in Hebrew and Aramaic and Greek and Latin and Armenian and their uh, European uh, successor languages proudly and loudly among them uh, French, not Arabic. Um, Arabism in that sense is a colonialist construct and a presumptive uh, Arab identity when foisted on Lebanon and the rest of the Near East without regard to a salient pre-Arab nationalist history, uh, that Arabism is a colonialist formula. Uh, in the same vein, uh, the Crusaders were not, uh, as described in post-colonial romantic quarters, they are not hordes uh, 
of greedy Western barbarians marching unprovoked onto the lands of beatific, cultured, innocent Muslims. Nor were uh, the Christian intruders, uh, the European Christian intruders, on um, supposedly a heartland uh, of Islam, the case of, of the Crusades. To the contrary, the Crusades were the outcome of centuries of Muslim aggression and relentless Muslim intrusions on the Christian world. Uh, likewise, European Crusaders uh, were uh, no more barbarian uh, and no less cultured and sophisticated than uh, were the Muslims that they encountered on the battlefield and in uh, the marketplace in, in the Levant. Uh, claiming otherwise um, is looking at the Crusades through the mirror of a modern world, dubious of religious identities and imbued in post-colonialist uh, pieties. Uh, it is uh, concocting uh, false historical parallelisms uh, between modern Western colonialism and its supposed medieval uh, European crusader uh, ancestor. Uh, and, and by this way, you, you ignore altogether the colonialist, imperialist institution uh, that was the Islam uh, encountered by the Franks and the Islam that subjugated uh, local indigenous uh, non-Muslim cultures. Um, depictions of the contrary uh, is not only uh, sloppy and irresponsible, uh, it is uh, mendacious and <laughs> historically baseless. Indeed, when European Christians came east, uh, they were engaging not in a Christian jihad, they were uh, engaging uh, in acts of faith and devotion. And more importantly, uh, they came into not Muslim lands, nor even a Muslim heartland, but in fact, uh, Christian lands that were that were conquered and subjugated by Muslims five centuries prior, but still uh, Christian lands. Uh, and by the Middle Ages, they had become disputed holy lands, what we call the holy lands, still inhabited by a large proportion of indigenous Christians, Greeks, Copts, Armenians, Syriacs, Syrians, uh, whom we refer to collectively as Syriacs and Jews. And this in a space where Muslims and users of the Arabic language at that time were still a minority. Think about that for a second. By the time the Crusaders took Jerusalem back, 1099 AD, uh, half of the world's Christians were still in the Near East. Okay, so Christendom, half or slightly more than half of Christendom's uh, uh, demography was still in the Near East. And 60 to 80% of the inhabitants of the Near East were still non-Muslims by 1099, by, by the end of the 11th, beginning of the 12th century. Uh, so... So that when the Crusades came in the 11th century, they came into a world still dominated by Eastern Christians, both demographically and culturally, linguistically. Uh, Arabs had certainly penetrated the region, established sizable settlements, namely with uh, nomadic communities of Bedouins and sedentary Arabic-speaking Muslims. But the Muslims in general and Muslim elites in particular were still a minority population. And uh, alongside uh, Arabic speaking uh, Muslims, um, according to uh, medievalist and, and historian of the Crusades, Thomas Asbridge, uh, he says, little more than a fractured patchwork of disparate social and devotional groupings, meaning the, 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 the Levant, according to Asbridge, was little more than a fractured patchwork of disparate social and devotional groupings, and not an Islamic stronghold, end quote. Indeed, he continues, and I quote, the Levant was also something of a backwater, 
notwithstanding the political and spiritual significance attached to cities like Jerusalem and Damascus, the real centers of Muslim governmental authority, economic wealth, and cultural identity were in Mesopotamia and Egypt. The Near East was essentially the border zone between these two spheres of influence, a world sometimes to be contested, but almost always to be treated as a secondary concern for Muslims. Thus, when Latin crusading armies arrived in the Near East to wage what essentially were frontier wars, they were not actually invading the heartlands of Islam. Instead, they were fighting for control of a land that, in some respects, was also Muslim frontier, but also Christian frontier, peopled by an assortment of Christians, Jews, and Muslims, who over the centuries had become acculturated to the experience of conquest and an external by an external force, uh, be it at the hands of Byzantines and Persians or Arabs and Turks, end quote. Indeed, in those medieval times, again, half of the world's Christians were still in the near Middle East and somewhere between 60 to 80% of the Near East population were still non-Muslims and non-Arabic-speaking uh, peoples. Think about that for a second. 